Alright guys, so I recently started playing some old computer games and I found out it's actually kinda tricky to do when it's uh, Windows 98 games, the ones that were new enough that they're not compatible with DOS, so you can't just use DOSBox, and they're old enough that you're not gonna be r able to run them on anything, you know, after XP basically. So. Um, so I thought I would make a tutorial to kind of guide anyone through it who wa has old games like that and they still want to play them. Um, as far as I know, like, these are the ways that you would have to do it. Um, you could use a retro computer, like an old one that already has Windows 98 on it, you know, or whatever. Um, the disadvantage of that is you're gonna have old computer specs so you're not gonna be able to take advantage of modern uh, <laughs> processing power and all that which could be a problem for you um, if say you were playing a game and you wanted to record it you wouldn't really be able to record it uh, at least in any kind of good quality using a old computer because it it just can't you know uh, pound through the bits at a rate that it needs to to uh, record some high quality video for you so if you were going to go that way and record it you would have to connect it to another computer like as a input so I'm pretty much crossing this one off the list um, another option is to like dual boot basically Windows 98 or similar OS on a modern computer um, again this is an ideal because you know you're dealing with Windows 98 so you're not you're not gonna have the uh, the availability of a lot of the pr modern recording programs. Um, also, you have to modify your uh, your boot configuration on your modern computer, which you may not want to modify your computer that heavily. You know, usually it involves messing with partitions and uh, master boot records and all that stuff. Um, and basically makes it so every time you start up your computer it asks you what OS you want to boot to which can be kind of annoying um, so I would say you're probably not going to want to do that either which really leaves the last option which is um, having a program that runs a virtual computer and installing Windows 98 on the virtual computer this shouldn't really affect your computer settings very much um, other than you know you have to install the virtual computer program um, the virtualization program uh, so it has the advantage of not really modifying your computer a whole heck of a lot and also if it basically runs the virtual computer inside of a window so as long as you can record your desktop you should be able to record uh, record this virtual computer on your modern computer taking advantage of your uh, processing and your modern recording programs um, the one of the big virtualization programs out there and what I'm recommending for this is VMware uh, this is uh, VMware.com. If you go to the downloads, oh, I didn't mean to actually click on that, but if you go to downloads, right here, this player under free products, it's free for personal use, so you can just get it straight from the website. Um, and once you get that installed, you can create a new virtual machine. And, um, first it wants you to select how you're going to install your operating system 
because it's basically creating a virtual computer that doesn't have anything set up on it at all. So it's like a blank slate. It doesn't have an operating system or anything. So what you're going to need is either a Windows 98 or similar operating system uh, physical disk or a ISO file, which is like a, a file that represents a disk, basically. Um, it does have to be a .iso. If you have, like, say, a .img, that's also a disk image file, but it's not compatible with this program. So if you do have, like, a .img, you're going to want to burn it to a physical disk and then do it this way. Um, I have a... Windows 98 second edition uh, ISO here that we can use. Um, it wants you to name it. This is just uh, for your references, so we'll call it test or something. Um, it saves the hard drive to, it saves the virtual machine's hard drive to your physical machine's hard drive, and this is where it saves uh, the data for that machine. So you can make your selection. Um, it wants you to select a hard drive size. It it makes recommendation based on your operating system um, that you've selected. Uh, if it doesn't know what you selected then you know you're gonna have to set this manually. Um, I think I think FAT32 drives were limited to 2 gigs, if I'm thinking right. I don't know. So they didn't really need very big hard drives back then. Um, keep in mind, if you make this huge and you don't have a lot of hard drive space on your physical computer, uh, that's not so good. Um, so make sure you have, you know, a few gigs to spare on the host machine before you uh, do this. Um, it doesn't have to set it all up right away. Uh, it actually... I think it usually makes it so that the file gets bigger as the hard drive fills up. So if the hard drive has empty space, it... Uh, well, maybe it doesn't do that. I'm not sure. It might do that, though so that if you haven't filled the hard drive, the virtual hard drive, it's not actually filling your f physical hard drive. But just make sure you allocate that much space, because, you know, if the virtual computer needs it, it's going to try to take it. And if you don't have it to give, it's going to cause problems, <laughs> certainly. Um, this is just whether you want it to be one big file or multiple little files. Little files are e are easier to transfer because if they screw up you know you just transfer a little piece but you probably won't be transferring it so it probably doesn't matter um, most of the stuff it uh, it'll configure automatically for you all these settings are fine um, this is just whether you want it to start right away or not okay I'll say yeah okay so it's it is running our virtual computer Oh, it's telling me some hardware I have connected. That's okay. Alright, so if we click this button, we are now on this virtual computer. It's full screened. Um, you see we're at a, uh, at a black screen with some white text. I think it was booting from the disk or trying to. Or maybe I didn't select it in time to tell it to boot from the disk. Um, all your mouse input and keyboard input at this time goes directly to the virtual machine. Um, that can cause some problems because, like, how do I get out of this, you know? Um, to get out of it, control and alt at the same time. And then you're at the outside computer. There's this, uh, this menu here. Unclick the full screen button. You're back to your regular computer. Um, yeah, I think we're going to need to restart unless it's just being really slow. So we can go to this, restart it. 
Yeah, I'm sure I want to do it. Okay. Yeah. We're going to go down to boot from CD-ROM. That's because the CD-ROM is that ISO file or our physical CD drive in our uh, host computer. So, and that's going to have the installation for the operating system on it. Um, okay, this is this is from the actual disk. This is the data on the on the installation disk. Um, if you're installing a different version of Windows, this might be a little different. I'm not sure how much of this I'll actually need to show, but we'll go through it just in case it's uh, difficult. Okay. Uh, start setup from the CD-ROM. It's doing some processing. Uh, let me full screen this again. Oh, Control and Alt. Okay, click the button. Okay. Do 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 to set up Windows Now. Press Enter. Enter. Setup needs to configure space. Okay, the hard disk, the virtual hard disk. It has 8 gigs like we set it up, but it hasn't been partitioned or anything. And that means that it's like it's there, but the computer can't use it yet. The computer has to set it up to be able to understand the disk information. So we'll tell it go ahead and uh go ahead and configure it. Uh we'll do large disk support cuz otherwise uh we might be limited in how big our disk can be. Okay, it says setup will restart. Now, I know it says make sure you, the boot disk is in drive A, which would be referring to a floppy disk. Um, but last time I went through the setup, it actually didn't need anything in the floppy drive. So I don't know if either VMware takes care of that for me or uh, okay make sure you do from CD-ROM again um, see now it's formatting the drive so that the uh, the software will be able to to install itself on there um formatting is basically like your heart like imagine your hard drive is like a filing cabinet only it's a filing cabinet without any drawers uh formatting it basically puts drawers in there so that you can put stuff on it um you can have it set up so it's all one big drawer or you can have it so that uh, you have more than one drawer or drawers of different size alright routine check on your system yeah sure okay let's see and we're in the Windows 98 setup alright now I bet this will be a lot of clicking continues. Okay, at some point this is going to ask for a CD key. Um, so if uh, it actually lets you go quite far into the installation process without asking you for that, which I think is really dumb. Like what kind of a... <laughs> I think, and I think if you can't provide it, it just like aborts. So, um, I think it might have been on the Windows 98 sleeve. Um, yet. Well, let's look at custom. Yeah, I think I know at least something we're gonna wanna we're gonna wanna Look at this, it doesn't give us anything. <laughs> well, this is all optional. But uh if it was me, I think I would at the very least
Uh, what's it under? I forget. Oh, I think it's under this. Oh, dang it. Yeah, games. Free Cell, Hearts, Minesweeper, Solitaire. So if you're trying to play any of those, like the ones that come with Windows 98, make sure you check that box. Yeah, sorry. That That's all I was trying to show there. Because <laughs> I thought, uh, you know, that's... Oh, you know what else? There's screensavers, too. I think those weren't selected by default. I'm not sure what they're under, though. I know I saw screensavers on here the last time I did this. They're somewhere in here. I'm not exactly sure what they're under, but they're in there. And they're not selected by default. So if you want the screensavers, you're going to have to find them in this. Or you can also install them later, but you'll need the disk again. Windows 98 setup was not the uh, most user friendly, which is part of the reason that I think I want to show this on on camera. It there's a lot of just clicking next over and over and over again, and then uh, it does a lot of setup, and then you need to click next over and over and over again again. <laughs> but yeah, CD key, you're gonna need one. Basically, it was uh, like a registration key to prove that you bought it was the original idea behind it. So your your disk should should in theory have one um, with it. A lot of times on modern computers, um, like that you buy at a store or whatever, they have a little sticker on it that tells you the CD key for your version of Windows. Um, I'm not sure if they did that back in the 98 days, but if they did, you might be able to find it on uh, the case of an old computer. I think maybe they didn't start doing that until more recently, though. And unfortunately, this does take a long time, even on a modern computer, I think. Uh, uh, I don't think it's because it's doing a lot of calculations. I think it's just kind of like... Uh, it takes the amount of time it takes. <laughs> type of deal because I mean write speeds on computers are a lot better than they used to be so I mean there's no reason that this shouldn't you know just happen really really fast but it doesn't so probably the uh, setup isn't optimized to run quickly on a computer with vastly superior processing power Alright, maybe I'll cut till after I enter the CD key. I think that's the next thing it's going to ask for. Alright, so it did a restart just then, and uh, it it brought up some a box for me to fill out, and it wasn't recognizing my mouse movements or my keyboard strokes. So I just restarted the... Uh, the computer manually again. Um, just a heads up. Oh, it wants me to at least enter a name. 
I like putting owner when computers ask for a name because it's nice and generic. Um, we accept the agreement. Okay. Oh, it got out the pen and paper. Okay. I will enter the CD key and be right back. Alright, and I just entered the CD key and click next and it brought me to this. Um, now I'm sure it's not legal to do, but, uh, if as an absolute necessity you can't have no other way to come up with a CD key, I'm sure you could probably find it online, but, you know, I'm not going to tell you to do that. I'm just saying. Because I am sure there will be people that won't have the physical disc and are going to message me. And <laughs> I mean, I'm not telling you to do anything illegal, but I'm just saying, if you refuse to do the legal thing, it doesn't really leave much else. Okay. I'm not exactly sure how many dialog boxes there are. Um, I remember this, uh, this whole installation process just takes a really, really long time. Old programs, gotta love them, right? Maybe I'll cut till something exciting happens again. Alright, and it restarted and it brought up some more questions, so I thought I'd start again. Yeah, I'm... Most of this stuff probably doesn't matter. Even if you enter it right or, right or wrong. Um, I'm sorry this, uh, this tutorial's uh, dragging on so long. I suppose one thing you can take from this is that uh, this is not a quick process, but it's not exactly hard. Um, and one, and you only need to install Windows 98 once. Uh, once you get it installed, you'll be able to start it up and play your games and install whatever games you want on it. And I mean. As far as I know, in in theory, it should play 100% of the Windows 98 games. Um, I can't think of any reason why it wouldn't. And again, whatever it plays, you should be able to record as long as you can record your, uh, your desktop. Because, you know, this virtual desktop is my desktop right now, basically. Um... Yeah, I guess I'll I'll go until uh until some something pops up for me again. Oh wait, wait, nah, nothing's gonna pop up. Yeah, see you in a bit. All right, um, it restarted and it brought us to this. Um, you don't have to enter anything in the password. You can just leave it blank. Just click OK. Um. Oh, now one thing I do want to address, um, when I went through similar steps to uh, play some games previously, for some reason VMware wasn't able to set up the audio drivers correctly. Um, so what I actually had to do was go on the internet and find the drivers and transfer them to the computer. See, like, I think this usually has sound to it. And I don't think we're playing any sound right now. Because we don't have these sound and drivers installed. Okay. <clears throat> so, to get the sound drivers, first you gotta download them. Uh, probably on your uh, host machine, as in not the Windows 98 one. Wow. 
I guess that's going so slow because I'm recording, maybe. Anyway, um, pretty fancy. Uh, what was I saying? All right, okay. You're probably gonna want to use your not Windows 98 computer to download the drivers, um, the sound drivers, and then you're gonna need to transfer them to this virtual computer. But how do you do that? Okay, I'm gonna show you the easiest way. Um, let's see. Um, let's go back into into windowed mode if I can. And see here, it's telling me I finished installing. Um, it's gonna ask me well, it usually asks me, but we can do this manually. Go to Player, Manage, Install VMware Tools. Now what these do is these are tools that help your host operating system out here interact with this a little bit better. So you can do stuff like dragging and dropping files into this computer, from this computer, and that sort of thing. Okay, and when I did that, what it did was it, I believe it installed a CD-ROM into, into the disk drive on the virtual machine, which then auto-played, yeah, see, and it auto-played, and it brought up an installer on this in inside computer. We'll just do the typical. And what these VMware tools do, they'll be able to let us move files to this computer. I think they'll let us move files from this computer to the outside one. Um, all right. So now you'll notice I can move my mouse into this window and it transforms into the Windows 98 pointer. Before I was clicking in this and then I had to click again, then I had to do control and alt to get out of it again. But now that I've installed that, I can just move the mouse outside of the window and there's no problem. So it's really nice to install that. If you're going to run a virtual computer, I would very much recommend the VMware tools. Uh, we'll restart later. Um, now I have the sound driver. Uh, well, here let's let's find some audio on the computer. Um, what has audio? Let's let's find the uh, let's find the system sounds maybe. Okay, like this, I can't click play because it doesn't have sound drivers. Now, these are some sound drivers I downloaded. I uh, I was actually looking up information on how to fix my sound issue because I tried going to VMware's website and doing the things they suggested and it just wasn't working for me. Um, somebody linked to these sound drivers. If I can find it, I'll link the... Uh, the download link. Otherwise, I might upload them somewhere else and then link to that. Okay, so I drag them in and since I got the VMware tools, I can do that. And then I run them. Um, yeah, maybe we'll close this stuff so it's not so... Uh, I don't know if I got that double clicked. Okay. These are the creative sound drivers. Creative is a company. Um, according to the information I was looking up, uh, 
you were supposed to install the uh, creative sound drivers, but the like the sound blaster, the creative sound blaster drivers. But for some reason, um, the ones that came on the Windows 98 disk were not working for me. So maybe these are more updated drivers or something. I'm not exactly sure what the source of those was. Probably the creative website. Okay, it's asking me to put in the Windows 98 disk. Okay. Removable de devices. CD drive. Settings. Um, we had it in there already, but I think it ejected it in order to do that VM where tools thing, so let me switch it to physical for a second, and then let me switch it back. That might uh, straighten it out. Oh, seriously. Hang on. Alright, got it tracked down again. <laughs> okay, let's see if this works. Alright, and then click OK. I may need to restart this, uh, this virtual computer before I can, uh, yeah, it's still got VMware tools in it. Okay, yeah. We're going to cancel this setup and actually, I wonder if the virtual computer can access my internet or not. Alright, well it claims the installation was complete even without the Windows 98 disk, so we'll see if it needed it. We'll restart it. Oh, oh. now while it restarts, there's something else I want to talk about. Okay, now we've talked about doing things the legal way, guys, right? Okay. Now VMware Player see that right there non-commercial use only so what that means is if you're using VMware player and you're doing something that is commercial which really comes down to doing anything that makes you money anything commercial um, so that would include making YouTube videos and monetizing them. Um, according to the the license agreement for VMware Player, you're not supposed to use it like that. Um, so you would have to uh, buy a license, a commercial license from VMware. Um, you should be able to do that right on the website in order to be legit, guys. Okay? So that's a heads up for you guys. So if you are using this to, uh, all right, let's see if if the sounds work or if we need to get that Windows 98 disk figured out before it. Uh, nope, still not working. All right, let's see if the Windows 98 disk is in. It is. All right, let's run the sound drivers. But yeah, um, I would like to make tutorials as abridged as possible, but when there's lots of little hiccups that you got to work through, that's part of the process too. So I would like to cut a lot of this out, but I'm sure it's helpful to anyone that's actually trying to do this stuff. So that's why I'm trying to leave as much of this in as I can.
Oh, new hardware found. That's a good sign. Okay. And it's going to force me to restart again. Oh. Welcome to the legitimate Windows 98 experience, guys. If you didn't grow up uh, in the era of this was computers, consider yourself lucky. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, um, they, they, they simplified computers a lot since then. They got better at making com programs user-friendly, so you didn't have to have a computer degree to fight through the problems, and you didn't have to be on... You heard that? That means we got sound working. Let's just go to the sounds, just to show you what happens when you have the sound working. Because, uh... Okay, I guess that's just going to take a while to start up. Maybe? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Right there. And see, now there's a play button. It It's in black, so you can click on it. And the sound works. So, that last sound step is technically optional, but if you're playing a game, you're going to want sound. You're going to want sound. Um, so, there you have it. Oh, I guess one more thing I should talk about. Okay, so you got Windows 98 installed. Cool. Now you got your game disk that you want to install. So how do you do it? Well, easy peasy. You go here, go to Removable Devices, go to the CD-ROM drive, go to Settings, Make sure you tell it to use the physical drive on your uh, modern computer, basically. Um, auto detects fine most of the time. If you have problems, you might want to play with it. Um, click OK. Just tell it to override if it asks you that. Um, open your open your disk drive. Put in put in your game disk, and you'll be good to go. Most most games will have an autoplay, and it'll it'll automatically run the disk and start an installer and all that stuff. Um, if it doesn't, you can just uh, well. Usually, there's a autoplay on this, or otherwise, if you open the disk and you find like a setup.exe or something like that, um, or an auto run, something along those lines. Those would be the ones to go for. Uh, so it shouldn't be too hard. It varies by the game, I'm sure. But uh, So I think that's everything you need to know. Um, I'll have to s put a link for the sound drivers in the description. One way or another, because like, I needed these to get sound working, so I'm sure you will need these too, unless you have a slightly different version of ni Windows 98 than me. Maybe that's my issue. I don't know. But I needed these, so I'm willing to bet you need them too. Um, again, VMware Player you can get for free from VMware.com. Um, I'll show you that how to get to that link again, because it was kind of... It's, it's a little bit hard to find. Uh, yeah, this is the VMware main page that I'm loading here. Um, down, I did it again. I did that last time too. You just hover over it. It brings us up. Free products. Player. That's that's your virtualization machine right there. So, with those two things, you can you can get it done. It takes a bit of time, but you'll be able to play all your old games. That's all there is to it. Uh, if I if I missed any th important information or anything, um, let me know in the comments, and I'll try to add annotations if something major comes up that I missed. Um, if you guys have any tips, you can leave those in the comments too, and maybe other people can see them.
other than that, I think I think we're done here. So see ya. Yeah.